Hi everybody. The purpose of this video is to talk about input and output. So we're going to be looking at two commands in Python. Your first two real basic commands that we're going to use. And they are the print command and the input command. Uh, so the print command, we'll start with that. I've got a Python shell open here, and so uh, you might want to have a Python shell and follow along. Print command's purpose is to print out to the screen any information that you want. And so you have a variety of different things that can be printed out to the screen. So for instance, in the Python shell, I'm going to go ahead and start by typing print, and then I'll say, hello world. Okay. Now that's a, the uh, typical first program that anybody writes is the hello world program. In Python, it's super simple. It's just one line. This print command, if you hit enter, will simply print out to the screen, hello world, just as you'd expect. Hello world in this case is an example of what we call a string literal. Um, what I mean by that is we literally print it out, hello world. Uh, here's another example of a string literal. Print x. Okay, if we hit enter here, of course it will print out x. Literally the letter x. Uh, but we have a few other things that we can print out too. Uh, so for instance, uh, we could print out numeric literals. So print 5. And it prints 5. Please notice that after every print word in that I've typed, I've used parentheses. It's because print is what we call a function. Any function in Python is always followed by what we call an argument list. An argument list is the set of things that we are applying to that function. And so what do I want to print? I want to print a 5. What do I want to print? I want to print hello world. These are the arguments to the print function. Uh, and so anytime you're doing a command in Python, it will always have parentheses after it even if there's nothing to send to the command. Um, you might have noticed this in your turtle drawings when you would want to pick up the pen if you ever used that command. Pen dot up. Well up had parentheses after it even though there was nothing to tell up to do. It already knew up just picks up the pen. Um, so we can print numerical expressions, arithmetic expressions. 6 plus 7. It will evaluate that expression and print the result. But I want to try something else, because there's a third type of thing that we can print. Just say print x, but this time, instead of putting quotes around it, leave it without quotes and see what happens. We get an error. Okay, This is a confusing bit of output that this is on the screen now, but the last line tells you name error. Name x is not defined. What is that saying? Well, when we don't put quotes around something, it's no longer a literal. Uh, it's no longer a string literal, right? And so Python thinks that x is a variable. But we haven't defined an x variable, and so Python doesn't know what to print at this point. So uh, if we wanted to use this code, print x, where x is a variable, we'd have to define that variable. So we could say x equals, and now here's the interesting thing. We'll see this more in a later video, but x can be any kind of variable. It can be a string, like Mr. Miller, or you can type your name. And now if we say print x, it evaluates that variable and finds its value. Notice the difference between print x in no, without quotes and print x with quotes. With quotes, it's literally the letter x, and it prints x. You can make x a number. x equals 75 print x, print 75. So variables can hold values of different types. Okay, that's pretty much it for print. Um, we can do things like, um, you can play around with it. You could say um, print 5 plus x, right? 80. If you let x equal a string again, then you could say print this is and then plus x. Can you, can you guess what this will do? This is a string. That's called concatenation. Uh, we'll talk more about this kind of thing later on, but there are a lot of different things you can do with variable expressions like this in a print statement. Okay. Uh, then the only other command I want to talk about today is the input command. And the input is how we get um, data from the user. Right. So um, what we do with the input command is we ask the user a question or give the user a prompt and that allows the user then to type in a response to that. So let's say something like um, input. Now since this is a command, a function in Python, we need parentheses. And then we ask a question. 
we could say, um, what is your favorite color? Don't forget your quotes. That's a, a literal that we want to ask about. If I do this, it will ask me, what is your favorite color? I forgot the question mark. I will say blue. Okay? And it says blue. But here's the thing. That blue is now lost. I don't have that data anymore. It printed it out for me. It asked me the question, but I lost that data. Uh, and I have no way to get it back. So whenever we ask a question, we want to store the answer in a variable. So you will never see an input command like I just did there by itself. We'll always include a variable with it that we're going to set it equal to. Okay, And um, let's name our variable color. Let me make a point here. Notice color is the word color. In Python, unlike in math, right, you're used to variables in math being like x or y or maybe even a or b or something like that. In programming languages, variables can be more than one letter long. And actually, it makes sense to make them meaningful. So if you have a variable that's going to store a certain piece of information, like your favorite color, it makes sense to call it color. So I want you to be in the practice of naming your variables well. So color equals input. What is your favorite color? Question mark this time. Now it's asked me, what's my favorite color? Blue. Okay, notice it didn't print out the blue this time. That's because the output of the, or the result of that input command went instead to the color variable. If I type color now, that variable is storing the value blue. Okay, notice blue is in quotes. Input by default stores all of the results in strings because it doesn't know what type of information is coming back. So anything you type uh, in an input, as uh, to answer an input, question or as part of an input command will be stored as a string. Okay, Let's write our first program using print and input so you can see how this works and this will help you with your temperature program and your compound interest program. So we're going to write a uh, program that converts people years to dog years. Right now you probably heard dog years are you know every year for a dog is like seven years for a person so if a dog's three years old that's like a 21 year old person right so we're going to convert the other way we're going to ask you how old you are and then have it print out how old that how many dog years that is right so let's start off by just saying what this program will do right it's a good idea to always comment your code with um, your name and the purpose of the program dog year converter okay those are comments the computer ignores them. Right? All right, print. This program will convert your age to dog years. Okay. Now let's ask the, uh, ask the user what their name is so we can say to them individually, hey, Michael, your age in dog years is whatever. Anna, your age in dog years is whatever. How do we do that? We use the input command. And so we're going to say input. You should be doing this in your own window. Um, what is your name? Now, there's something wrong with this statement. Does anybody, do you, can you figure out what it is? Well, if we do this, it will ask what is your name, but we'll lose the information. We want to store this in a variable. So let's make a variable called name. Name equals. Now notice here I've started the line with name equals. It's always the case that left gets right. What I mean by that is this isn't a mathematical equality statement. This is saying make a variable name and set it equal to input. So you might not want to read that equal sign as equals. You might want to read that as name gets what is your name's output, right? So that equal sign is an assignment equals. Name gets the result of the following command. It has to happen in that order. We could not write input what is your name equals name. It wouldn't work. Variable is always on the left. Okay, we also want to know the person's age. So let's say age equals input what is your age. Okay, and then lastly we want to print out what that person's uh, age is in dog years, right? So let's print, we'll do this in two lines. We'll say print um, and then the person's name, so we can tell them, and then say plus, and then a space, your age in dog years is, 
and then another line. This will put it on a second line. And then we want to take that age and divide it by 7. So age divided by 7. Okay. Go ahead and save this. Or just run it. It'll ask you to save. I call it dog years. And it's going to ask me my name. Mr. Miller. How old are you? I'm 29, actually. Oh, we have an error. What happened? Maybe you caught it as we typed. I did this on purpose because I want you to see foreshadowing into our data types um, lesson. It says type error, unsupported operand types for slash. Well, this slash was our division. Stir and int. Well, what does that mean? Well, if you recall, I told you that the input command by default stores all of its results as a string. So age, and actually I can, I can look at these values here, right? If I type my name, for instance, in the shell, well, that was a variable, and holds Mr. Miller because the input asked that. If I type age, it says 29. But notice, it doesn't say 29 is a number. It says 29 in quotes, which means it's a string. And strings aren't numbers. It looks like a number, but it's not actually a number. And so we can't treat it like a number, meaning, for specifically, we can't divide it. Well, then what do we do? I want to divide this age by 7. Well, what you have to do is convert it, right? And Python has a bunch of conversion functions. One of them um, turns strings into integers, right? And since 29 is an integer, notice this int here. We can convert it to an integer as long as it's a valid number. The way you do that is... Um, actually, I'll do this a different way. The way you do that is to say that the age is equal to the integer that is represented by itself. Notice how strange that statement looks. Age equals int age. I'm saying make the age variable assign it to the integer of the value that's currently in the age variable. So this, you wouldn't be able to do this in math, right? Like change the variable name or change the value of a variable based on itself. But in Python and any programming language, this is a fine thing to do. So age gets the integer of itself. Okay. Now if we run this program and save it, it's going to ask me again, what is your name? Mr. Miller. What is your age? 29. Yes, Mr. Miller, your age in dog years is 4.142857. Okay. So now it's working, right? We could have shortcutted this. I started to type this, but I didn't want to um, do too much in, at once. We can, because this integer function, this int, is a function, it is a command. Notice the parentheses. We can pass in as the argument to that function anything we want, right, as long as it's a number. I could have called that right here. This is a little bit of a shortcut. Because the input function is going to return a string that's a number, I can pass that result into the int function, and it's going to convert it all in one line. So we'll run it one last time, and then that'll be it. What is your name? Mr. Miller, 29, and it works just fine. Okay. Hopefully this helps you with your temperature and uh, compound interest programs. Ask me questions if you need any help, and that's it.